So I want to start things off today with a little bit of a story. See, this is the RTX 2060 Super. So it launched a good while ago and it was, well, it was a bit exciting for one reason for me. Now, if you followed the channel for a while, you'll know that I actually used this card for a lot of different content in the sense that when new games came out and they had ray tracing support, you know, the new fancy stuff, we always used this card as kind of the barometer because what this card represented in the market was the $400 price point and I'm not going to act like the $400 price point is inexpensive because it's not. It's 400 bucks. It's a good bit of money. But this card got you eight gigs of VRAM instead of six gigs like the 2060 non-super. Got you a bit more CUDA cores and it really got you that performance that got you into RTX. You could actually, if you bought this for 1080p, now you could do 1440p gaming with it, but realistically, if you wanted to do RTX and all that stuff, you were gonna be at 1080p. Regular games, you're gonna kill it. But with RTX enabled, or RT, DXR, and all that jazz, you were able to get really good smooth performance so long as the game had deep learning super sampling, so DLSS. Now, they also released the 2080 Super. Now, this one could do the same thing at 1440p, but if you wanted it at 1080p, you could run games without DLSS, so you could get the native image. Now, arguably, in a lot of the newer titles that use DLSS 2.0, you're going to get a better image by using DLSS 2.0. Now, $400 graphics card for ultimate 1080p gaming, that makes sense. $700 graphics card does not make sense. Well, that's kind of where today's video card comes into play. This is the GeForce RTX 3060 Ti, or Ti. NVIDIA says TI, but everybody says TI when they're referring to it, so we're just going to say TI. Sorry, NVIDIA, but that's just how we're going to call this one today. Now, the idea here is this is an Ampere-based GPU that is coming to market to replace the RTX 2060 Super. Now, I like that they didn't use the Super moniker. They used the TI or TI, and what you get here is a 200-watt card. It's a little bit nicer looking than the 3070, in my opinion, and you're getting the pricing of the outgoing 2060 Super and the performance of the outgoing 2080 Super. I kind of just gave away most of it. But this is kind of the tradition. So 2060 Super, or actually the 2060 rather, did the same thing to the 1080. 2060 Super didn't dethrone the 1080 Ti, but it did, it did outpace the 1080. There was no instance where the 1080 beat the RTX 2060. And quite honestly, I was anticipating somewhat of the same performance for the 3060 Ti. However, I was expecting it to best the 2080, not the 2080 Super. So in that regards, kudos. Now as far as the GPU, what you're looking at is, of course, a TU-104 die. We're looking at 4,864 CUDA cores, and that is down from the 5,888 of the RTX 3080, which you'll see those in the graphs. You'll see how close this GPU comes to the more expensive 3070. You're talking about a $100 price difference, 1,000 CUDA cores, and really that's about it. It's a little bit less TDP, has the same VRAM, has the same memory bus, but it comes surprisingly close to the RTX 3070 in games. Now in the video today, we're only gonna be looking at one aspect. If you wanna see the full review, I'm gonna pin that down in the comment section below. You'll be able to see the full review, a lot of pages, over 10,000 words about Ampere and the performance of this card, where it stacks up, and how it you know, kind of redefines the current $400 price tier. Now, in the video, in the benchmarks that we're going to talk about here in the video, we're going to be looking exclusively at 1080p. I know, some people are like, teeth, 1080p. But 1080p, ray tracing enabled in all of the titles, no DLSS. Want to see how, how well this performs compared to the outgoing 2060 Super and how it performs to the 2080 Super as well as the 3070. No synthetic benchmarks here and we're throwing up the test bench on the screen there so you guys can get an idea of what we're working with when we go into this. It's the same test bench we've been using and quite honestly it'll be the same test bench we'll be using going forward for quite some time but at least you know what we're working with. Now Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p with the highest settings and ray tracing at ultra. Boom! 76 FPS. Now 
quite honestly, and those 1% lows, 1% percentiles are at 67 FPS. So you're gonna get a really smooth experience. Now admittedly, 3070 does do a bit better, and the 2080 Super is just behind the 3060 Ti. So there it goes. 5 FPS lead over the 2080 Super, which is pretty good, and a substantial jump over the 2060 Super that was almost there. Now moving into Cold War, we see, well, a bit of the same story. Now this one's a little bit different, and honestly, the uh, 2060 Super did a really good job holding down performance, but once again, the 3060 Ti goes head and above, and the 3070 absolutely very good performance there in this title. Now, again, all these games, really, they've got DLSS, you can turn it on, and you're gonna see your frame rate soar even higher. But, moving on to control. Control, we've got 67 FPS average with the 3060 Ti. That's a fair, fair bit behind the 3070, which you can see the advantage of those extra CUDA cores coming into play there. However, again, substantial lead over the 2080 and completely obliterating the 2060 Super that was nigh well, I mean, you could play it, but it was not a very smooth experience. Moving into Battlefield 5, that was a game where the 2060 Super was able to break 60 FPS without DLSS, and, well, 3060 has a 23 FPS lead, that's 30%, a little bit, a little bit over 30% faster, and the 3070, again, but you can see this game doesn't scale too ter you know, too, too greatly at 1080p. Moving to Metro Exodus, that's a pretty big lead there. Over 100 FPS on the 3060 Ti, and it's right there neck and neck with the 3070, showing that it's more of an architectural thing. However, the 2060 Super or 2080 Super was able to was not able to break 100 FPS, whereas 3060 Ti did. Watchdog Legions is a re rinse and repeat of very much what we've seen so far. 3060 Ti comes fairly close to the 3070, just a few FPS uh, difference there. Even the lower end, it's quite smooth. Now, the 2080 Super does a pretty good job performing here. However, 2060 Super, yep, you're going to be turning DLSS on for this one. Moving into Boundary, now I just want to say this about Boundary. Uh, the game's not out yet, and the benchmark is crazy. So it's really intense, especially the opening section of it. However, it does show a good generational performance leap from the 2060 Super to the 3060 Ti. Now, the last and but not least is... A Medieval, this is a favorite of mine. I absolutely love this game. And in here you see a pretty good jump when you go from the 2060 to the 3060 Ti. But if you got the 2060, you're gonna be able to enjoy this game with all the bells and whistles turned on. So crank them up, turn them on, even DLSS, you know, turn it on, enjoy it. Now, there you go. There's the performance 1080p RTX on, but no DLSS. See, DLSS really will boost this card and does a really good job, but I wanted to see raw performance. Take that out of the equation. Let's see how I did it 1080p. Quite honestly, the fact that you can run all of these games well over 60 FPS at, well, except for Boundary, without DLSS on, turn on DLSS, frame rate's gonna go through the roof. So, moving, if you wanna wonder how things do at 1440p and you don't wanna look at the review, basically take these numbers, move them up to 1440p and turn on DLSS, well, that's what you get. You kind of get the 1080p performance at 1440p with DLSS turned on, but you're going to kind of you're going to need those games to support DLSS. So, the thing is here, if you're a 1080p gamer and you like your high refresh rate, so take Cold War for example. Like I like to play the single player with all the bells and whistles turned on. I want to see it really pretty. But when I switch over into multiplayer, I'm going to turn that stuff off because I want super high frame rates. You're going to get that here. 1080p super high frame rates, turn that stuff off, you know, for competitive play. Uh, for single player experiences, boom. And you've got Cyberpunk 2077 coming up, and well, they're saying it's gonna be able to do it at RTX Ultra settings, 1080p. We'll see, we will see. As Soon as it comes out, we'll be testing it. I wanna test that claim on this card. If that's the case, good deal. Now, before we jump in, as, as we roll out, I just wanna play some control for you guys, show you guys control running on this card, real time, 1080p, no DLSS, all that jazz. But if you can't find it at the MSRP and stock is bad, then it may be worth waiting for because maybe by the time it comes in stock, its competition has something to offer. But right now as it stands, at $400, this is the card to get. I wouldn't buy this, I wouldn't buy the 5700 XT, and if I can't buy this one for $400 and it's gonna be a lot more because of availability, I would just hold off. Wait for the stock to come back, wait for the price to go normal, then I would get it. All right, guys, enjoy Control, and we'll catch you in the next one.
All right, guys. So here it is. This is here, 1080p resolution render, render high, 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 high. Ray tracing set to high. Okay. All right. Now that that out of the way, I'm going to get off here. A lot of these questions could be answered by obtaining a live specimen.